church like you know uh, yeah. hallelujah. I thank God I thank God for a new day thank you Lord glory hallelujah hallelujah thank you Lord that is a word from the Lord hallelujah but I got to repent before him first I saw the text message of the schedule and I'm like why they got me on now they don't need me that everything is going like it needs to be going but I thank God that I have an ear to hear God. Yes. And God. even after I got through with the rant that I went on, the Lord just showed me so much love and mercy as he began to open the word of God to me. Amen. Hallelujah. And I thank him today you. that Philippians 4 and 6 is so familiar. It is such a familiar spirit and people of God as you're looking at me now, I'm waiting on you to go ahead and share this post. I'm waiting on you to go ahead and invite somebody else to see what you're about to see, to hear what you're about to hear. Hallelujah. As the word will go forth today. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I'm grateful to God for his word. Philippians 4 and 6. Go ahead and like and share this page. It's something good to share. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. In this season, yes. it's real good. Oh, I thank God for his word. Thank you, Lord. Philippians 4 and 6 says, be careful for nothing, yes. but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Yes. Let your request be known unto oh, God. Man. I woke up yesterday and couldn't hardly oh. talk. And, and, and even when I saw the text, you know what I said? I was like Jesus right before they were getting ready to kill him. Ah, Jesus said, Father, let this cup pass me by. I don't want to do it. I don't need the pulpit. I'm already doing church. I'm already the church. Hallelujah. But guess what? Bless my soul. The next sentence, nevertheless. <laughs> hey, glory. Yeah. Nevertheless, yeah. my voice needs to be heard yeah. in this season. Yeah. So when I woke up and couldn't run and tell yesterday, I knew it was a setup. <laughs> Hallelujah. I knew the strength of God was going to give me everything I need. Yeah. And I thank him for it. Yeah. Yes, seven says, and the peace of God which passes all understanding yeah. shall keep your hearts and your crazy mind, Brenda. <laughs> Hallelujah. Through Christ Jesus. Oh, I give him glory this morning. And I thank him for coming into this place. I felt my strength as I came into this place. The place that I've missed, the place that I've needed. And so I'm grateful to God for his word. And so what he, what he gave me was, and, and, and I don't care how you think you are super saint and how you think you this and you think you that. Every word will be tested. Every, every business that got cut down. We went to multi thousands of dollars in a month to zero. But can I tell you, in a family, I'm still feasting. Hey, because I'm glad that I already had prayers rendered up. I already been in the face of God. So he said nothing can come close to my dwelling place. Now, yeah, when I go out, you'll see me in my mask. I do what I want. Uh-huh. Because it's in God I trust. It's the other folks. Uh, <laughs> Glory to God. But I thank him because he revealed something to me in this word. And, and, and he said, don't panic in a pandemic. Pray. It was just that simple. Don't panic in a pandemic. Pray. And I know y'all been hearing it and you've been hearing it and you've been hearing it. But the Lord God Almighty want you to know in everything you got to pray. Yes. With all supplications, with thanksgiving, not doubting, not complaining, but with thanksgiving, being thankful unto him. We're so ungrateful. We still hear some of us are getting increased in a family. And I know I'm telling the truth. I'm watching people that didn't know how they was going to make it begin to just lift their hands. And say the Lord 
is my provider. He had to show us, he didn't have to show me that he was my provider. He had to show me that in everything, Brenda, you done stood and said that you have blessed the Lord at all times. Now you want this cup to pass you by. Now what you gonna do? You're gonna be hot, you're gonna be cold. What you gonna do? And I choose to obey God. He said if you're willing and obedient, hey, you'll eat the good of the land. And so I have to stand here today just to let you know not to panic in a pandemic. Pray. And so the remedy for the people of God, and I know it don't matter when we get to heaven, but while we on this earth, while we are in America, you better pray. You better, you better open your eyes of your understanding to see what God is doing. God is, God is in full control. My pastor been telling y'all that since this jumped off. And y'all got to know that. Anytime the whole world can shut down. Yes, 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 yes. And there are people being saved. There are people that's lifting their hands and saying, Lord, I'm without surrender. What must I do to be saved? So, so don't, don't be fooled by what you see. Don't be fooled by the media because God is winning. And, and he's pulling his saints out of this place. And I thank God today. Even in a famine, oh, glory, you can feast. So don't panic in a pandemic. Pray. Yes, Lord. Don't worry. Don't panic. Pray. Let your prayers and your praise transform your worries. And I know uh, entrepreneurs uh, that have been in that place of worry. How I'm going to make it? How I'm going to do it? I, all I got is this. All I have is this gift that God has given me by my hands. But if I tell you, the Lord will give you wisdom. And you will still be able to do what you need to do in this season. Because God will reveal it to you. Glory to God. So let your prayers and praise transform your worries or concerns. Because God is concerned about us. Let, it, let, let all your prayers, all your praise, all your worship transform your worries, whatever you're concerned about. Let him transform it by you praying. And before you know it, God's love and wholeness, wholeness yeah, yeah. will come and embrace you. And, it'll, and, and, and that love and in everything that I do, all my confidence is in God. It's never in me. Because I have to say, Lord, what you want me to say? Lord, what I'm going to say? Everybody saying the same thing. He said, you say what I give you. And it's this familiar Philippians 4 and 6. Don't be anxious. Don't be anxious. Come on, don't panic. Don't panic. Oh, yes, Lord. And so God's unfailing love will settle you down. <laughs> and God's peace to be your portion. So don't panic in a pandemic. Don't, don't, don't even let the media throw you off. Use the wisdom of God that he has given you. And all we have to do is ask the Lord, Lord, what you want me to do? Lord, what's my next step? Look like I got to change the game. What can I do? And let me tell you something. He will do exactly what his words say he will do. So do not panic. In a pandemic, pray. Yeah. And as I get ready to, to release this microphone, I, they're they going to learn to quit uh, calling on me and give me a mic. They're going to learn. Okay. They're going to learn. Yeah. But I have to tell you that I begin to just start thinking about the love of God. Yeah. And how he loves us so much. And how uh, sometimes we don't even realize how much he loves us. And how he protects. Us, and how he keep on keeping us and how he give us enough strength to do what he's called us to do because there ain't no strength in me there's nothing in me I'm nothing without him I can do nothing without him I begin to just think about how much the Lord loved me and I'm, I'm just gonna I'm gonna do a little bit uh -huh, and then I'm gonna get out the way y'all know 
I just I, I, I just love God and I love oh, yeah. every last one of y'all. I just I love y'all, love y'all, love you. And so right now, all I want to do is just sing a little bit of my song that has blessed my soul going through this don't panic pandemic. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And all it is is yes, Jesus loves me.
Open your mouth. 
worship right there. Come on, right where you are, just begin to lift your hands and begin to speak in your prayer language. Thanking God for his love for us. Oh God, we bless you today because we know that you don't have to love us. It's not about goodness. It's not because of our mercy, but it's because of your love for us. Thank you, God. We bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus.
to talk a little bit today. I, I believe that God is up to something. Uh, I thank the minister for the way for uh, just for opening up for, with such power. Amen. Amen. I feel God all through, through that, and through this worship, and through this prayer. So I, I'm getting ready to preach the word of God. Uh, the Bible says that everything else is going to pass away. The only thing that's going to be left is the word of God. Can somebody say amen? Amen. amen. So that means that you've got everything that you need in the word of God. Amen. 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 So there's no need to look for nothing else. Whatever you need, you need to find it in the word of God. Amen. 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 So Father, for these next moments, give me preaching power that you be able to communicate your word to your people and let your people be better after having heard the word of God. Amen. Just for a moment, just for a moment, I want you to turn to Matthew the 28th chapter, verse number 18. Matthew 28, verse 18. And when you got it, say amen. Amen. I just want to teach you today. I, I feel the power of God. And I feel like these are the best days of our life because we, we're about to see God do some crazy yeah. stuff that you've never even seen before. Amen. 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 They might be lost. We ain't lost. Amen. 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 We have a Savior. We have a Redeemer. We have a Provider. And He promised that He would never leave us nor forsake us. So just for a moment, uh, let's look at that 28th verse, uh, uh, the 28th chapter, verse number 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power, now look at this, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach what? All nations, yes. baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe, somebody say, all things, all things. whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always. Somebody say, he's always with me. He's always, always with me. Even to the end of the world. And somebody say, amen. Amen. So just for a moment, I, I just want to talk uh, today, Brenda, about uh, just a question I want to ask you, and the question is, what's the activating the power of God from working in your life? Amen. Come on, uh, uh, what's the activating the power of God from working in your life? Amen. Now, I, I want to start out by just simply saying, there's nothing wrong with the Word of God. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. It has power, there's healing, <laughs> there's deliverance. Everything is in the word of God. Oh, I can start off by saying, I am what it says I am. Amen. I can do what it says I can do. Amen. I can have whatever it says I can have. But the question is, with all this power, with all this anointing, why don't you have any power? What's deactivating? What's deactivating? And, and that word, deactivate, it, it, it simply means what's disconnecting you or destroying you from the power of God. Wow. Uh, if I was as a military, who has removed you from active duty? Wow. Wow. Yeah. Because, because uh, uh, you've got to be able to know that everything that you need is in the word of God. Yeah. So I've got to examine myself. Yeah. Why isn't the word working for me? If God says for me to count it all joy, yes, then there ought to be some joy in the house. Yes. If God gave you a promise that he would never leave you nor forsake you, then why are you looking like you're forsaken? My mind. If God says by your stripes you are already healed, then somebody needs to claim their healing. Yes. See, one thing about Satan, he always is trying to distract us. From the power. That's right. And if you get distracted from the power, you can never get to victory. Yes. So I want to make sure I take time to teach this because all the jumping and shouting is over. And now only thing we have, you don't have your bank account. Sometimes you don't have relationships. The Bible says that the only thing is going to be left is the word of God. And it makes only good sense that I know what's in the word. The, the promises of God are yea and amen. But if you don't know the promise, you can't say amen. If God told you, lo, I'm with you always, 
And that means that every situation you find yourself in, somebody say, God is there. God is there. And if God is there, then guess what? You already got the victory. See, we've got to make sure that in this word that we are activating. Somebody say, activate. The power of God. When people see you, they ought to feel God on your life. They ought to see God on your life. And they ought to hear God coming out of your mouth. So we got to make sure. We don't need a lot of emotions. What we need is something that's going to last forever. And the Bible says the word of God, somebody said, will last forever. So I, I, I've got to ask myself again, What's deactivating me from the, what's disconnecting me? Who's turning the lights out? And why am I not happy no more? Or should I say foolish Galatians? Who bewitched you? You used to have a dance. Why are you not dancing no more? You used to have a testimony. Why are you not testifying no more? Because God has the power. Somebody said God has the power. So when I looked at this, when I looked at this here, when I looked at this here, I asked God, I said, God, uh, let me be able to articulate what is disconnecting me. What is disconnecting me from the power of God? And one thing that God brought up in, to me was fear. So I write that and say fear. Fear. If you don't deal with fear, fear can become a spirit, and a spirit can control your life. See, you've got to deal with the spirit of fear. God has not given you the spirit of fear. I, I'm going to say it one more time. God has not given you the spirit of fear. Amen. Say it one more time because some of y'all are I said God has not given you the spirit of fear. Amen. Come on. You've got to have a sound mind. So fear can deactivate the power of God from operating in my life. Amen. Why do you think the Bible says we are to cast down every imagination that comes against the word of God? Yeah. What are you fearing? When the Bible says that no one can take you out of God's hand. If God got you in your hand, nobody can pluck you out. So when we say, what's the activating the power of God from operating in our life? I've got to look at my life. Am I living a life of fear? See, while you're trying to figure some things out, can I suggest to you God is already working them out for your good? The Bible never said that you were exempted. It says, Lo, though I walk through the valley. And sometimes we got to go through the valley. But in the valley, I am not to fear. Why? Because God is in the valley. Come on, come on. We got to lift up our head to the hills from which coming our help. Our help comes from the Lord. Somebody say, fear not. Fear not. So the question is, what's the activating the power? The Bible says, you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And if you got the Holy Ghost, you ought to have some power. Oh, y'all quite a bit. Somebody say, power to overcome. So, 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 I had to look at it because it, 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 if I allow fear to operate in my life, then I can't activate my faith. If I can't activate my faith, I can't activate my breakthrough. If I can't activate my breakthrough, I can't activate my deliverance. If I can't activate my deliverance, I can't activate my deliverance. And if I can't activate my deliverance, guess what? I can't do the impossible. Oh my God. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. Fear and faith does not go together. That's right. I'm going to say it one more time. Fear and faith does not go together. Amen. Okay, okay, okay. I'm going to preach it anyway. Thank you. So, 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 number two. So, we see, we now, now we see that fear can deactivate the power of God. What else can deactivate the power of God? Uh, number two, well, when we rely on our own power instead of the power of God. See, see, this is where, where the power gets deactivated. When we start relying on our own power instead of the power of God. Amen. amen. Somebody say amen. 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 It's when we start leaning to our own understanding. Right. The Bible says, lean not to your own understanding. Yes, In all your ways, 
and not accept and he what? Will direct your path. Come on, we gotta teach this right now. So I can deactivate the power from leading to my own understanding. Relying on my own power. And let me tell you how God is. God is like this. If you got it, then I'm gonna step out the way. Come on, come on. If you're looking for power from somebody else, I'm going to step out the way. Oh Can I suggest to you the reason why a lot of us are not getting our, our breakthrough, has not getting our deliverance, because we're looking for some other power. All right. yes, yes, yes. Let me tell you something. The Bible says, without me, you are nothing. What are you relying on? And it's funny, the things that we thought that we had that we could rely on, now we can't rely on. You, you thought you were self-made. Yeah. Now you branding yourself. You doing all this and stuff. Show me now where your power is. I'm looking at preachers now that are panicking. And let me tell you something. Anytime you take God out of it, you're supposed to panic. Because God said, since you say it's your church, then you take care of your church. You say it's your house, you take care of your house. You say it's your body, then you take care of your body. So, so we deactivate the power of God when we start leaning to our own understanding or relying on an, another power. Can I suggest to you that some of us are leaning to our own understanding? What do you do when you don't know what to do? What do you do when everything is dried up? What do you do when your job shuts down? What do you do when you ain't able to make no money no more? What do you do when they say this is happening and don't go outside, put a mask on, and you put a mask on, but shit, everybody else put a mask on. What do you do? Can you trust somebody? Can you not trust somebody? How you gonna live like that? The Bible says we deactivate the power of God when we start leading to our own understanding and when we start relying on our own power. Come on, touch your neighbor, look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, say, you ain't got no power. You ain't got no power. You ain't got... It's God's power. It's God's power. Okay, okay. Number three, number three. We, 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 we deactivate the power of God. Number three, when we hold on to guilt of our sins and we won't repent. Come on now. Come on. Oh, they don't like that one now. Somebody say, repent, 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 repent. 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 See, one thing about God. We've got to be faithful to God. When you're wrong, just let God know you're wrong. Amen. And let me tell you something. One thing that the enemy will try to do, see, the enemy wants you to stay in bondage. When you repent of your sins, somebody say, let it go. Somebody say, let it go. Even though you let it go, guess what? The enemy didn't let it go. And let me tell you something. One thing that the enemy wants from all of us is for us to stay in our past. Right. Amen, 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 amen. Right. Come on, say stay in the past. He wants me to stay in our past. See, the enemy is like this. He is a slave master. And he wants you to stay in bondage. And he knows the only way he can keep you in bondage is to keep you from the word of God. Because the Bible says, who the Son set free is free indeed. So maybe what's keeping me and what's the deactivating the power of God from working in my life, I just won't repent of my sin or I keep holding on to the guilt of my past. Somebody say, my past is over. See, a lot of us, we stay stuck in the past. And let me tell you something. If you want to miss God, stay stuck in the past. Because he said, forget about those things which are behind. See, there's some people, you just got to forget about it. Let me tell you something. Everybody is not going to walk along with you. There will be some people who give up on you. Some people don't think it ain't nothing to you. But let me tell you something about God. God is doing the work and it's marvelous and in sight. And when God gets through with it, guess what? He's going to get the victory. Somebody say he's going to get the victory. He's going to get the victory out of my life. Okay, okay. I'm just going to teach today. So, so what's deactivating the power of God from working in my life? Number four, we look for spiritual highs and good feelings more than a relationship with God. 
I'm going to say that one more time. We look for spiritual highs and a good feeling more than a relationship with God. Yeah. Most Christians struggle walking with God because we walk with God. We just want to feel good. And let me tell you something about God. If you had a true walk with God, every day ain't going to feel good. That, that's going to be some time when you walk with God. You're going to know where he's at. And there's some times you walk with God and God won't say nothing. But during this time, all God tells you is to trust him. See, see, we, 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 we are living in a, in a day and a time we just want to have a, a good feeling. Oh my God. And let me tell you something. You, you can't find it in the Bible. He did not say that this life would be full of good. He said a man is born of a woman, has a few days, and they are full of trouble. trouble. Yeah. Somebody say trouble. trouble. And just in case it hadn't came yet, keep living. Yeah. Trouble got away a knocking on your door. Amen. Uninvited, unannounced, it just shows up that you don't know. So, 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 one of the things that the reason why we deactivate the power, we want to feel good than have a relationship with God. See, a true relationship with God, God going to let you know who you are. He going to let you know what you need to let go. He going to tell you what's really going on with you. And then sometimes while you're pointing at other people, guess what God do? He said, you got three fingers pointing right there, and that's you. And it's funny how we want to feel good when the message is good. No, oh, I want to be a millionaire. Oh, I'm going to be the head, not the tail. But when he said repent, you won't shout. When he said come out, you won't come out. When he said cast down that imagination, and when he said shut the door, we won't shut the door. Right. So, so I cannot, I cannot have a relationship with God if I'm going to allow my emotions and my feelings and not to have a true relationship. One thing about God, people will lie to you, <laughs> but God will always tell you the truth. I wish I had somebody else. Somebody, okay. They're not with me. They're not on Facebook. I wish somebody would uh, give me a heart or something. Has God ever told you the truth about you? Folks will lie to you and let you stay in your mess and act a fool and they laugh and talk behind your back. But one thing about God, he said, I love you enough. I gotta always tell you the truth. And that's why I love him so much in the relationship. The truth will set you free. Somebody say set you free. Set you free. And some of us, the reason we're not set free is because we won't hear the truth. Somebody say the truth. truth. So when I don't hear the truth, I limit the power of God from operating in my life. Number five, number five, I'm almost done. Number five, the reason why the power of God is deactivated in our life. We expect them, so we receive them. Woo! I'm giving myself a high five on that. We expect them, so we receive them. I'm going to say it one more time. We expect them, and we receive little. Yes, yes, yes. Let me tell you something. The reason why the power of God is deactivated in our life is because some of us, we don't expect God to do nothing. Let me tell you something. The worst thing you can do is hook up with somebody. All they do is talk. I mean, they could have been had the degree by now. They could have opened their business by now. They could have done some things. Come on, talk is cheap. Yes. Either you expecting something from God yes. or you're not expecting. I wake up every day. I expect God to do something in my life. And I wish I had somebody up in here say, I'm expecting God to do something in my life. When I woke up this morning, I expected God to do something. And let me tell you something, I don't care who ain't with me, I know God is with me. So I've got to make sure that I understand this. 
See, sometimes we don't expect nothing. And because we don't expect nothing, God can't do nothing in our life. Let me teach this to you just for a moment. Do you know how, 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 how boring God gets? Do you know how offended he is? When all you can say is, God, you did something yesterday in my life. And God said, I want to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you that ask or even think. I want to do something that's never been done before. I want to use you who they think you are nobody. And I'm going to put my hands on you. And I'm going to turn your life around. And when I get through with that, you ain't going to steal the glory. You going to open up your mouth and say, God did it. Somebody help me say, I'm expecting something. I'm expecting God to move. I'm expecting God to do something in my life. What are you expecting? When you expecting God to do something in your life, it's a certain way you come in the sanctuary. It's a certain way that you come in the sanctuary. You don't come with your head down. You come and say, God, this is the day. I wish I had somebody to open up your mouth. Say, this is the day, is the day. that the Lord yeah. has to make. Yeah. I don't come in. I'm going to do some stuff. But this could be the day that everything turns around and works out for my good. Come on, Facebook. I want somebody to put some heart. Say, this is the day. This is the last day. But I'm gonna sit here in confusion. This is the last day I'm gonna sit here in pain. This is the last day I'm just gonna exist. Baby, just cause you come to church, that don't mean nothing. When people look at your life, what do they see? You mean to tell me all you can do is come to church and see what vexes my spirit is when people come to work, uh, come to church, and they treat it just like a job. Baby, I, I don't come here and treat it like a job. I come here because I know I'm coming to meet God. And the Bible says, if two or more can touch and agree on anything, I'll be in the midst. Now I'm closing this out. I'm closing this out. My, uh, probably about 20 years ago, mm -hmm. I was my pastor's owner there. Okay. And we got this trip. We flew out of the country. And uh, we were staying at this hotel. I mean, this is the hotel of hotels. Uh -oh. I mean, when you walk on the grounds, they got people in tuxedos uh -oh. well. to open up your door. Mm -hmm. They know who you are before you even come on the ground. And so I'm, I'm all excited because I've been hearing about this hotel. It's the Prima Prim Hotel. It's grand. It's, the objects are so beautiful. So we walked through the doors and, and, and they said, uh, told my pastor, say, we're happy to have you. We've been expecting you. And so uh, they said, let us check you in. So uh, it's the VIP treatment. So they check him in and, and uh, they get his name and all that. They gave him a card for his dog. I'm his armor bearer. So they say, would you like, the, 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 what you call the bellboy to carry up your badge? <laughs> so we went up to the 21st floor. And boy, we put the key in the door and opened it up. Brenda I walked in there. It looked like somebody's house. It was so big. Living room, dining room. Uh, I don't know, a uh, 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 jacuzzi, three bedrooms, and all this stuff. I'm in awe. So I got him checked in, and, and, and he said, uh, Ephraim, uh, give him $50. I said, $50? He said, yeah. He ain't for carrying my bags up. I said, $50? Mm -hmm. So I reached in my pocket, and I gave him $50. So I went back downstairs. Mm -hmm. And I went back downstairs to check in. They said, hey, Mr. McDuffie. The woman, you know, she checked me in. And this hotel, they give you these good cookies. <laughs> the best cookies you ever had. I mean, you eat these cookies, they just melt in your mouth, Sandy. 
So she, so, so she checks me in and she gives me the key and I take the key and I put it in my wallet and I put it in there and I say, they say, well, do you want the bag or the carrier store? I said, oh no, no, I got, I got this here. <laughs> See, I was a little cheap back then. Uh, so I go to drag up uh, my bags. I got two big old bags, a roll bag, and this on my shoulder. And I'm carrying it up because I don't want to spend that little $50. I'm going to keep my own $50. Yeah. I go up there. And uh, I get to the 15th floor. And these beautiful double doors, they got a suite for me. And I put the card in. And it wouldn't open the door. Oh, no. I'm mad now. I'm mad now. I'm mad now. <laughs> I go back downstairs. And uh, I, I'm in the line again, and she said, can I help you? I said, yeah, I, I went up there, and I put the card in the thing, and it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't open up. She said, hmm, that's strange. So she activated the card again. She gave me a new card. I said, can you give me two cookies <laughs> for all my trouble? I take the card, I put it in my little thing, put it in my pocket, and I go back upstairs. And when I go back upstairs, I put the card back in the door. It would not open the door. Now I'm upset. I'm thinking some pressure is going on or something now. I storm back downstairs and I get in the front of the line. I said, ma'am, it's not working again. And she said, well, this has never happened before. And this is what really got me. She said, you've got to be doing something wrong. And but when she said that, oh, some stuff in the 23rd Psalm didn't come to my mind. I said, I, I took the card out. You gave me the card. I took it out. I put it in this little pouch, and I put the pouch in my pocket. And she said, wait a minute. Let me see the pouch. My phone was in the pouch. She had activated the card. But when I put it in the pouch, right behind my phone, and put it in my pocket, by the time I got upstairs, it had deactivated. Can I suggest to you, that's just like the word of God. We've got the word of God. I'm ready to go home. we got the word of God, and we got all this power, and all these blessings. And guess what? By the time we get to our destination, something has deactivated the power. I want you to look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, what's deactivating your power? If God said it's yours, then you got to act like it's yours. you got power. you got good of us power. The Bible says the steps of a good man are all in power. something I was doing. I wonder how much time have you lost? 
You mean to tell me summer's gone, winter's gone, fall's gone, and you still ain't saved? Come on, Come on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You want to tell me you think that you got the power where you can look at somebody and judge them for same same stuff you doing? Come on. What's the difference? She doing it in public, you doing it at home. Ain't no different. Ain't no different. He drinks on the street, you drink at home. What's the difference? She sleeps, she's a prostitute on the street, you're a prostitute at home. What's the difference? Come on, let's talk about this here. What's deactivating the power from you? I brought them to your disciples. You lose time. You lose time. Okay, y'all don't believe you lose time? Let me tell you how I know you lose time. There was a man that sat in a pool for 38 years waiting for the water to be tried. 38 years he lost, 24 hours a day, he lost time. And let me tell you something, when you ain't in the right place with God, you are losing time. Time you can't get back. My Lord. Okay, okay. So, so, so I, I, I lost time. I lost time, but, but then again, the second thing I lost, I lost rest. Yeah. Come on. The Bible said we labor to rest. And I gotta ask you, if, if, if God said he'll keep you in perfect peace, why, 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 why don't you get rest? Come on now. Come on. Help somebody. When the power of God is deactivated in your life, you're going to lose rest. Yes. Some of us ain't even, ain't even resting at night. Yes, yes, say that. The Bible says, take no thought about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Yes, yes. Yes, Lord. Remember, I just told you, one moment you can be making boo coos of money, and, and one moment, guess what? You can't make nothing. Yeah, yeah. Now, God wants to know who is your God? Come on now. Who do you really trust in? Yeah. What are some people losing rest right now? Yeah. Man, I, I, somebody told me, say, man, I looked at my. 401k, I lost 75000 I talked to this Caucasian man in my neighborhood. He said, I lost over $200,000. And guess what I told him? I told him, I ain't lost nothing. <laughs> because everything I have is in God. So how much time have you lost? How much rest have you lost? And then the third thing I lost was peace. I got so upset, so angry, and I'm lashing out at them for something I've done. Good, Pastor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir, that's good right there. You lost peace. Mm -hmm. And I ask you something. What stole your peace? Jesus said, I'm going away. I'm going away, but I don't want you to be accomplished. I'm going to leave you my peace. Mm -hmm. Not just any peace. Peace that surpasses all understanding. Yes, sir. Peace you can't explain. My God. I, I wish I had somebody Jesus. that no, the whole world could be in an uproar. Yes, God. Thank you, but the peace of God. Yes, Lord. And, and then, 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 then they have read enough. Why are you so happy? Yes, God. <laughs> I was up the other day and, and, and the judge was telling me all was going on and I'm just glad. He said, Why are you so happy? Uh -uh. I said, I'm glad you asked. This joy. Yeah. Oh, I wish I had the church today. Yeah. This job yeah. that I have, yeah. the world didn't give it to me. Yeah. If you for me or not, you didn't hurt your heart, the world didn't give it to me. And the world can't take it away. Yeah. Yeah. I know one thing. I keep on laughing and I keep on smiling because guess what? That's how I get my strength. Yeah. The joy of the Lord. So again, I'm going to ask you as I close. Oh, that's good news. What's deactivating? All right. The power of God mm -hmm. from operating in your life. The Bible said after the Holy Ghost come upon you, you shall receive what? Power. Come on. Jesus said, uh, if you just mention my name. Come on. When the Father hear you mention my name, whatever you want, the Father will give it to you. So again, we got all this power. No time to be tripping. I don't care if it's another month, if it's two months, if it's three months, if it's four months. My help. I wish I had somebody. My help. 
come from the Lord. And say, while I'm waiting, somebody say, while I'm waiting, God keeps on sending me checks. In the in my God, they still check yet. Come on, he'll make the devil pay you for the interruption. I wish I had somebody. But look at somebody and say, I'm about to get paid for the interruption, for the inconvenience. Time to re fortify That's right. your relationship with God. Yes. Come on, come on. This, this, this is the time you've been trying to get a prayer life. This is the time you get a good prayer life now. Yes. Right. Come on, you got time to pray in the morning, pray in the evening, pray in the noon day. And, and this is the time, this is the time you teach your kids how to pray. That's right. now, now, let me tell you something now. Now, now we're living some time. Let me tell you, you're not going to make it without prayer. Come on, yeah. come on what should you be doing? This is, this is time. You should be working on the vision that God gave you. Yes. Come on, come on. If one thing upsets me about people, see, see, sometimes people say it's money, it, it, it's I don't have this, have it. You can have everything you need and still stay stuck in the same situation. Come on now. Sometimes I look at people. Sometimes people are their worst enemies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Who told you that? God is no respectable person. Who told you you were in a family? You never in a family with God. Who told you you were in trouble? Who told you you were in trouble? Why are you saying that? Why, why would you release something like that? What have, have you allowed frustrations? Let me tell you something. I was talking to a friend of mine today. Was in a marriage, and, and we were just talking about it. He, he said these words. He said, "Man, listen, man." He said, "Where we are now, we ain't always been there." And I said, what do you mean? He said, a lot of people look at us, and they look at our marriage, they look at everything that we, where we are now, but they don't see all the hell we went through. Come on now. Right. Come on now. Let me tell you something. I don't care who you see, what relationship you're in, let me tell you something. We all got some stuff we got to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. How can you say somebody, do you like me, do you love me, do you love yourself? Come on now. Some of us, some of us, some of us, some of us still holding on to past stuff. And we still got the residue from our past. And because we trust the people, they, they, they gave us something to hold on to. You still hold on to members. You still hold on to some stuff from your past. Let me tell you something. Look at this Bible. I want to have the only one point about feel. Look at this Bible. In this Bible, most of us would have never followed some of the disciples' ministry. Peter, cussing, fighting, cutting folks, and, and Jesus had to rebuke him and say, Satan, get thee by, you would you follow somebody like that? Come on. Dolly Thomas, look at him. Look at the struggles. Come on, look at all these people. Paul was a murderer. See, let me tell you something. God is working on all of us. And that's why we got to be transparent with people. You've got some issues. I've got some issues. But only God can work on the issues. Yes. What should we be doing right now? We should be praying for people. 
This is the time now. You got a voice. How you gonna go out and say the whole world and you got cubs out there on crack okay? You, you ain't praying. My God. We just gonna allow the devil to say, take over our families? Yes, my God. Thank the Lord. You wanna be seen. And guess what? You being seen has, has the, 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 uh, disconnected you from the power of God. My God. Now it's about you. You dressed up. You looking pretty. And you put on a great performance, but there's no deliverance going for it. So I, I, I close. What's the activating the power? I don't want to be like Samson. I don't want to get into a, that my last fight and only fight I don't have my strength. My strength comes from God. Yeah. Hands are lifted up. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord. This is the word you gave me, God. For your people. Now, Father, I ask you to bless. I ask you to help all of us, God. If there's anything has deactivated the power from working in my life, move it, God. I don't want it, God. I pray in the name of Jesus that today, Father, I ask for total deliverance in the airways. In this building, take it away, God. Yes. Somebody say, take it away, take it away. Take it away. If it's my own way of thinking, if I have allowed hurt and pain to rule my life, and I can't get my breakthrough because I still hold on to the residue of hurt and pain, take it away, God. Take it away, Lord. I want to have power, God. I want to be able to speak into somebody's life and somebody feel the power of God working, God. So, Father, I don't want to be disconnected from you. So today, God, I ask you, God, to help us all today. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Come on, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You're doing a work in our life. And it's marvelous in your sight. Help us, God. Help us, God. Change us, God. Make your way known to us, God. I don't want to lose time. I don't want to lose rest. I don't want to lose my peace by the mistakes I'm making. You want me to have me live the abundant life. You said joy unspeakable. You said by all things you want me to prosper and be in health, even as my soul prosper. So, Father, we ask you to help us this morning. Help us, God. Get us to that place. Yes, God. It's in the powerful name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen, amen. Keep the blood of hand clap of praise. Amen. Hand clap of praise. So listen, we're, we're done today. I, I want to speak into somebody's life. I want to speak into somebody's life. I want to speak into somebody's life. Listen, you might be on this camera. Listen, let me say this here. God is not through blessing you. Come on, humble yourself under the mighty hands of God and let God exalt you in due season. This is not the time to be leaning to your own understanding. You've got to make sure that you stay connected to God. And let me tell you something. I want to say this one more thing because I didn't get a chance to get to it. Sometimes we have stuff in our hearts that disconnect us from the power of God operating in our life. This is not the time to be holding on to stuff or the pain. Let it go. Just let some things go. Let go and trust God. He's going to finish what he started. And let me tell you, Whatever you've given up on, let me tell you something. Don't give up on nothing. Because let me tell you something. God has a power to redirect anything in your life. So I want to make sure I speak that into your life. Don't become a distraction. I'm going to say, don't become a, a distraction. Because when you become a distraction, God has to move you out the way. So I speak your healing. I speak your breakthrough. I speak blessings over your life. It's in the powerful name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Come on, give God a hand clap. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. Now listen, it's offering time. Amen. Somebody say it's offering time. Even during this, what we call pandemic and all that kind of stuff, uh, uh, we, 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 we know that God's still blessing. He said, bring all the tithes to the storehouse, that there may be resources in my house. Prove me and see will I not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out blessing. You won't have room to receive. So again, I want to make sure you're faithful to give it. Amen? Amen. 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 So there's some different ways you can give. They got PayPal. 
they got text and, and church and all that, so uh, it's on the screen how you can give. Make sure you stay faithful when you're giving. Amen? Amen. 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 And again, the best days are before you. Amen. 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 Let's stand to our feet. Let's give today to God. Amen. Come on, stand to our feet. Hold your seeds up at home. Hold your seeds up here at home. You're giving us. Hold your seeds up. Father, I thank you that today I give to the kingdom. And I pray whatever I release out of my hand, it leaves my hand, but it never leaves my life. Now, Father, you say you bring all the tithes and store all there might be resources in my mouth that prove me and see will I not open up the windows of heaven and pour our blessings if you won't have room to receive. You promise to do to the vow. Now, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that today, God, that you would make the seed be alive, supply, increase in every area of our life. Now, Father, I thank you that it's already done. Somebody say it's already done. It's already done. All the billionaires make some noise. Woo! Come on, billionaires make some noise. Woo! A number that can't be numbered makes some noise. Woo! Father, I thank you. Come on, you see a blessing, cheer for giving. Amen. 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 I cannot wait to get y'all back in the house. Amen. Amen. Until they say it's time for us all to come back together, we're going to stay safe, stay connected, and let God finish what he's doing. Amen. 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 Share, comment, create watch parties of today's service. And if you know a family member that is not on Facebook or on this social media platform or on Instagram, we are going live on Instagram as well. But if they don't have those platforms, you can catch our rebroadcast on YouTube on Pop Palace Nation. Pop Palace Nation. They can see the rebroadcast on our YouTube channel. Again, as Pastor said, when you give, you can give, we have four ways to give. You can give online by texting GIVE, G-I-V-E, to 281-688-6011. Again, the number is 281-688-6011. Then you can also give by PayPal. That's paypal.me slash praise121. Or you can give via Cash App, um, the dollar sign, Pop 
Palace Nation, P-O-P, Palace Nation. And then if you don't have those platforms, you can always send your, your offerings to our business office found at 117 West Hamilton Street, Houston, Texas, 77076. And as we always say, if you have a need, please contact us at the business office, or you can contact us via the Messenger app, or you can text us at 281-594-2730. You can text or call 281-594-2730. If you're in need of help, if you're in need of assistance, if you want someone to pray with you, we are here for you. Again, God bless you, and we're bringing Pastor back for our closing blessings. Amen, amen, amen. Again, the question is, what's deactivating the power of God from operating in your life? So let everybody examine yourselves. Amen, amen. We're getting ready to leave. Come on, set it to our feet. Set it to our feet. Hope you're having a wonderful day today. Let God control the day. Let me say it one more time. Let God control the day. Don't let the day control you, but let God control the day. Now, Daddy God, we're getting ready to leave from the sanctuary. We're getting ready to leave. Some of us are getting ready to turn the channel to other things and all that. But Father, I pray that you said you be with God and never leave us nor forsake us. Now, Father, we leave this place with never from your presence. Lord, we're going to take these highways and byways. Bring us back to the appointed time. Thank you for sending souls from the north, south, east, west nation. Folks, with your people, never tell them. Always tell them that Jesus Christ, you can trust us with every soul. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Love you so much.